John with Digital Foundry here, and today we're going to take a closer look at the remastered version of Uncharted, Drake's Fortune. With updated assets, improved performance, and sharper visuals, the 2007 original is reborn on PlayStation 4. We've already praised the Nathan Drake collection as a whole, but in looking at each of the three games individually, it's clear that the original game benefits the most from these improvements. The original game attempts to run at 30 frames per second, but slowdown and screen tearing prevent it from ever feeling completely fluid. As Naughty Dog's first attempt at a PlayStation 3 game, limited SPU usage and a number of inefficiencies limited its potential. It feels somewhat unpolished when played today, but the fact that the development team was able to hit its original release window and produce something so entertaining was nothing short of a miracle in the end. Now on PlayStation 4, we're able to finally experience the game at a full 60 frames per second, and it feels great. The increased fluidity coupled with the improved aiming really transforms the experience. With enemies bobbing and weaving around the scenery, the added input latency and large dead zone of the original often made it difficult to get a bead on foes. On PS4, all of that's been corrected. The upgrade in resolution also makes a pretty significant difference here. The original game runs at 1280 x 720 with 2x MSAA, while the remaster has been upgraded to a full 1080p with post-process anti-aliasing. At 1080p, the post-process solution actually produces more pleasing results. Really though, these are standard improvements for any remaster project. There was really never any doubt that Bluepoint games would deliver on these points. What makes this project so much more impressive than your typical remaster is the amount of effort poured into everything else, improving assets, lighting, and effects work throughout. The average user may believe that this is simply a sharper version of the game they knew and loved, but really, a lot has changed. The adventure begins here, as Nathan and Elena uncover the empty coffin of Sir Francis Drake. While the adventurous duo is interested in its contents, we're more interested in its appearance. You'll notice that both the coffin itself and the deck of the ship feature more detailed texture work. Also take a look at the cables running along the deck. They've actually been repositioned so as not to sit beneath those presumably heavy crates. Changes to character models become evident early on as well. Faces now more closely resemble the characters as they appear in later games, with more realistic skin rendering and higher quality shadow work. This applies to clothing as well. Here, in this shot, look at the tube extending from Elena's shoulder. Note how the tube and its connector are much more rounded and detailed on PS4. We see the same thing with Nate's suit, where this rounded port extruding from his shoulder enjoys a healthy bump in geometry. Moments later, as Nate walks into a shadowy area, Note the improvements to indirect lighting. In the original game, skin loses much of its texture in these conditions, resulting in an almost waxy complexion with exaggerated specular features. It appears much more realistic now. As Nate grabs his gun then, look closely at the crates in this scene. Once again, we see higher resolution texture work. Then we have the steel cables on the deck floor, which sport increased geometric detail. The sheer number of incidental objects that have been remodeled suggest an immense effort poured into this project. Another rather subtle improvement is the addition of transitions. In the original, jumps between pre-rendered scenes and gameplay were often jarring. With the remaster, the addition of a basic dip to black effect aids playback tremendously. This is then followed by a massive explosion. Both the explosion effect itself and the resulting debris have been modified and improved. The same can be observed in-game, where the original grapefruit explosion the game was known for has been replaced. A post-process blur effect has also been added to accentuate the effect. Of course, this doesn't always pan out as expected. Take these barrels, for instance. On PS4, the height of the updated explosion effect makes it appear as if the barrel disappears one frame into the animation. It's a bit jarring, even if the explosion effect itself looks good. Alright, let's step back and begin our exploration of the jungle. Right away, the elimination of texture popping and screen tearing make for a better first impression. On PS4, textures appear immediately, even if players choose to skip the previous pre-rendered cutscene. 
you can see textures drawing in very slowly on PS3 in comparison. Let's look at another scene where this issue is exacerbated even further. Again, textures are fully loaded on PS4 from the get-go, while the PS3 takes a bit of time to finish loading assets. As we begin strolling through the jungle, other changes start to become evident. Foliage density and placement has changed, along with the way in which it is lit. The harsh contrast of the original gives way to a softer light that feels more natural. The sun shadow maps have been improved both in resolution and positioning as well. Uncharted makes use of different types of shadows throughout, and the improvements vary on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. As we push forward, the upgrade in textures becomes even more evident. Nearly every texture in the game has been modified and improved to some capacity. When combined with superior texture filtering, the world just appears cleaner all around, eliminating the distant blur that plagues the original. As we run down through this stream, look at the rock wall to the right of Drake. New assets were created here to smooth over previously rough edges. The sharp contact lines of the original stonework gives way to a more natural rock formation with improved shading. Much of the level geometry throughout the game has been modified in this way. Okay, we're about to make our way into the first temple area, but to do that, we need to push this boulder down. Now if we pause for a second, we see not only an improvement in texture and model quality, but the shadow striping areas have been corrected as well. You can also appreciate the addition of per-object motion blur on Drake in this scene. Alright, let's continue. Once the boulder tumbles below, take note of the dust cloud kicked up in its wake. Once inside, we have another cutscene, and here you'll notice a change in the light corona around Nate and Solly's flashlights. The original almost looks like a Photoshop lens flare effect pasted on. Now, really, it would have been interesting to see Uncharted 3 style volumetric lighting in this game, but alas, that's not the case. A close up of Solly once again demonstrates the improvement to character shading and texturing, particularly in low light conditions. The rubbery look here on PS3 has been completely eliminated in the remastered version. As you can see, once we start exploring the temple, Drake is given access to a flashlight capable of casting shadows. On PS3, dynamic shadows make use of dithering, while on PS4, the technique has been modified, producing smoother results around the edges. That said, there are a few curious instances where we actually see shadows removed from the remaster. Take this moment, for instance. Players must utilize fire from the hanging lantern to burn the debris blocking Nate's path. As the wood burns, you'll notice flickering shadows on PS3 that have been eliminated in the remaster. Also note the difference in shadow quality on Nate's back. Not all areas require the dramatic changes we saw a bit earlier, of course. The deep jungles early on in the game seem to feature the same basic level geometry in both versions. Here, the main source of improvement stems from the enhanced texture work. Also take note of the change to the muzzle flash effect when Drake fires his pistol. Moments later we see enhanced foliage once more with a higher density of grass and improved lighting. This area in particular seems to hold up remarkably well. It has a very unique look to it that we're rather fond of. A bit further in, we approach the next area. Take a look at the shadows in this scene. On PS4, shadow maps are visible at a greater distance. Drake's fortune includes a number of vehicle-based sections. The Jeep escape sequence plants Drake behind a turret while Elena drives through the jungle. On PS3, screen tearing and slowdown kept the sequence from feeling as fast-paced and fluid as it should. The remastered version fixes this with steady performance and added motion blur, should you choose to enable it of course. This alone transforms the sequence into something much more thrilling, but there's more. Despite its faster pace, this section benefits from the same level of improvements we've seen with the rest of the game thus far. Check out the edge of this cliff, pretty big difference. Also note the thicker dust clouds kicked up by the jeep here.
You can see the same thing here. The collapsed bridge sports entirely new textures and details absent on PS3. As we arrive in the Drowned City, pay attention to the water. Note the improved ripple shader used as Drake pushes himself towards the shore. Perhaps this was adopted from later versions of the engine? This particular section also highlights just how much of a difference the improved texture filtering can make. Hopping on a jet ski, take note of one minor effect that has been removed here. The water spray visible along the left of the craft. Aside from that minor detail, however, the rest of the section looks and plays much better on PS4. In the end, Uncharted Drake's Fortune Remastered feels like the game we always wanted. The early days of PS3 development were difficult for everyone, including highly talented studios like Naughty Dog, and this remaster helps correct some of those original limitations. By smoothing out performance issues, improving controller response, and making tweaks based on knowledge gained from creating two sequels, Drake's Fortune Remastered is a real joy to play in 2015. Later games would go on to become globe-trotting adventures, but there is something intimate about spending the majority of the game confined to a single mysterious island. It has a few rough spots, of course, such as the animation blending limitations, and a few other frustrating sequences, but it still manages to feel pretty fresh and fun. If you're planning on picking up the Nathan Drake collection and still have a copy of the original PS3 game lying around, we'd recommend loading it up yourself. The remaster looks great regardless, but revisiting the original will help players better appreciate the improvements made to the remastered version. That about wraps it up for now. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we're really starting to ramp up this sort of content. Until next time, keep on adventuring. <laughs>